started off with a general overview of the banking sector in Angola. Yes, um, Angola is now the, the third largest banking sector in, in sub-Saharan Africa and it really is a banking system that over the last 10 years has, has undergone fundamental changes and it's now probably one of the most advanced sections of the Angolan economy. It's made up of, of 23 banks, so there are a number of banks, but it's still very much dominated by your top five tier one banks, your, your buyers, your BCs, your BPCs, who control over 80% of the market. Um, there, there's a very strong foreign influence in the banking system, right. particularly from Portugal, given their, their long history there. If we look going forward, I think it's a system that's going to continue to offer great opportunities for banks, but challenges as well. And I mean, this is on the back of, of the Angolan growth story, but, but more specifically things like the, the quanzerization of the economy and, of course, the, the recent foreign exchange laws around petroleum, which, which will have a big impact. When you talk about Angola's growth, you cannot uh, separate that from oil because Angola is Africa's second largest oil producer. So the fortunes of the banking sector and oil are very well intertwined. Yes, absolutely. I mean... Oil makes up in excess of 50% of Angola's GDP and by default the, the bank's exposure to oil is also significant. But part of the, the story with the Angolan banking sector is the gradual diversification that the banks have seen away from oil to other sections of the economy. Now, lending in Angola is not easy. There's certainly a number of challenges. But what we've seen is a reduction in concentration. There's still concentration. But we're seeing more exposure to other areas like forestry, construction, diamonds and, and the likes. And that is why this new foreign exchange law that is applicable to all foreign oil companies is very important to the banking sector. How is this likely to impact them? Absolutely. I mean, the, the new foreign exchange law, if correctly implemented, has right. the potential to, to fundamentally change banking in Angola. The reason it came about is in the past, foreign oil companies worked under a special dispensation where they could really bypass the Angolan banks. Yes. Going forward, they're going to have to move through the Angolan banks for their payments of suppliers and the likes. And what this will result in is significant dollar liquidity flowing through the banking system. This yes. is billions of dollars and it's, it will change the landscape and, and will offer opportunities, but there are a number of challenges that the banks will have to overcome. It is being phased out, phased in over two years. The first part was just implemented last month. Has there been any real critical changes? Phase one is, is the easy phase. Yes. You know, it's, it's the, the receipt of taxes, which is about $12.8 billion. So, you know, that, those flows are, are, are less frequent and, and, you know, not that significant. We'll see the major changes when Angolan um, suppliers are paid in, in dollars and kwanzas. Then we're going to see the very big numbers coming through. Right. And that's when we'll, they'll test the system and see if the banks are ready for these flows. What are the, any likely impact around liquidity and financial in, in intermediation? Liquidity is going to be a massive, massive issue. I mean, yes. the, the banking system has deposits of about $38 billion at the end of 2011. Now, if we just take the, the tax portion of that, that's an extra $12.5 billion. That money has to go somewhere. You know, it'll go out of the banking system and then come back in in the form of deposits. So liquidity, liquidity will be boosted. And of course, the banks are going to have to look to lend more. The, the banking system in Angola does not do that much lending because of the challenges associated with lending. Um, it's improving, but going forward, we're gonna to have to see fundamental reform in, in the type of lending that they can do so that they can use this additional liquidity in the system. But the banking sector will almost have to grow up real quickly because then the amount of uh, financial intermediation involved here means uh, the market is maturing much faster. Absolutely, uh, you know, it has grown up quickly over the yes. last little while. The next 18 months are really key for them. You know, I, I would hope to see a lot of reform around, you know, the ability for, for banks to enforce loans, collateral, things like property rights. Can you use property as collateral? Yes. All those types of things need to change and, and they need to get to grips with, with credit. You know, to lend to a corporate in Angola is, is very different to South Africa. Things like audited financials and all that, you know, back to the transparency story. Very difficult and, and for them to grow up, those sort of issues are going to have to be addressed. Do you feel the regulatory environment is strong enough vis-a-vis, -vis, let's say, stronger, more mature markets like South Africa? You can't compare, I mean, Angola's regulatory environment to South Africa or, yes. or worlds apart, but what we have seen are some very, very impressive and very um, comforting reforms over the last little while. Um, and it's certainly much better than it was two, three years ago. You know, the, the, the challenges they felt in 2008 on the oil price shocks right. certainly spurred the regulator to, to increase regulation, to increase supervision, which is fundamental to avoid problems down the, li down the line. What are the challenges and opportunities in their outlook for this year? Well, opportunities, 
you know, looking specifically at the FX law, up front would be more from a transactional revenue base. Um, yes. th there's going to be a lot of transactions through the, through the banking system. That, that's a big opportunity. Looking further along, as, as the banks lend more and they are more innovative with their products, certainly the opportunities should arise there. Challenges, well, it goes back to what I referred to, I mean, difficult to lend. Um, another key challenge for the Angolan banks is the skill shortage. You know, 27 years of war certainly makes it very difficult yes. to recruit necessary skills. And if they can't do that, there will be obviously weaknesses in, in certain areas of the banks. But I, I feel, in my view, that these challenges, they're aware of them and they certainly are addressing them you know, over the, the next 18 months. Is the Kwanzaa good for the economy? I believe the Kwanzaa will be good for the economy. You know, it's part of a, a broader Kwanzaaization of the economy, we, which we saw start maybe three years ago. Yes. Um, reforms that have come in, you know, we've seen restrictions from the regulator and the type of foreign currency lending you can do. Um, you can't, for instance, buy a car in dollars anymore. Yes. The more Kwanzaa we, we see being used in the economy, I believe will be a net pos positive for the, for the banks. All right, we'll leave it there. Many thanks, Ewan, for coming on.